Now, let us learn more about conclusions. Before we learn more about conclusions, if you notice here, the first and the second argument, we kind of written down the arguments, right? But we did not write the sentences down. Instead, we created a diagram, right? So the process of diagramming is very important in critical reasoning. You may say, doesn't take too much of time doing the diagramming of the argument? Maybe, but imagine this. You read the argument, you understand that and go to the answer choices. You read answer choice A, you know that it is wrong, so we eliminate answer choice A. Now, you go to answer choice B, you read answer choice B, you know that it is wrong as well, so we eliminate it. Right? Then, by the time you go down to answer choice C, you kind of forgotten what is there in the argument. Right? So, what do you do? You go back and forth between the argument and the answer choices, spending a lot of time and energy. Right? So, isn't this a waste of time and energy? Right. Instead, we create diagram. Once we diagram the argument, we do not go back to the argument at all. Right? Great. Now, let us understand the process of diagramming. Put the heading as diagramming. Okay? First step. Read the first sentence and diagram the first sentence. Second step. Read the second sentence and diagram the second sentence. Third step. Read the third sentence and diagram the third sentence. So why am I saying read the first sentence, diagram, read the second sentence, the diagram? Why can't I say read the argument and then diagram it? Because I don't want you to do that. What happens is when you read the entire argument and then start diagramming, you kind of forget what is there in the beginning of the argument, right? Therefore, we don't want to do that. Write a note. Do not read the entire argument and then diagram it. Okay? Wonderful. Now, step four. Step four is label every sentence either P or C. So, what is P or C? Premise and conclusion. Right. Premise and conclusion. Right. So, these are the steps in diagram. Now, let us learn more about conclusion. Simultaneously, understand how to implement the process of diagram. Alright. Great. Now, let us learn more about conclusion. We need to learn how and where the G Martin places conclusions in the argument. Right. Let us now read the first argument. Go ahead with the first argument. Manufacturers of mechanical pencils make most of their profit on pencil ends rather than on the pencil themselves. The right company which can Stop also... There. Remember, we need to read the first sentence and diagram the first sentence. So let us do that first. It says, manufacturers of mechanical pencil make more profits on pencil dead than on the pencil itself. Right? Okay, now go ahead and read the second sentence. The right company which cannot sell its lead as cheaply as the other manufacturers can plans to alter the design of its mechanical pencil so that it will accept only a newly designed right company lead which will be sold at the same price as the right company's current lead. Right. Now this is a, a very long sentence, right? Now it is broken into pieces. Now what does it say? The right company cannot sell it lead cheap. Therefore, they came up with a plan. What is the plan? Plan is to alter the design of the pencil so that the newly designed pencil will take only the WC there. Then they can sell this at the current price. Right? Alright. Can you raise the confusion here? Uh, manufacturers make more profit on pencil heads rather than on pencil themselves. No, that's not the confusion. Go ahead and read the question first. Which of the following, if true, most strongly supports the right company's projection? That its plan will lead to an increase in its sales of the pencil legs. So the author in this particular argument wanted to strengthen the point that the plan will help increase the sales of pencil legs. Right? So that plan becomes a conclusion. Conclusion is not what we think and I think. Conclusion is what author wanted us to strengthen or weaken. That point becomes a conclusion. In this case, author wanted us to strengthen the fact that the plan will help increase the sales of pencil legs. Right? And whatever is there in the argument is nothing but premises. So, this is a typical example where the conclusion is in the question and not in the argument. Let us now go to the second argument. Go ahead and read the second argument now. Passengers must exit aeroplanes swiftly after accidents. Since gases released following accidents are toxic to humans and often explode soon after being released. Alright. What does it say? It says, 
passengers must exit the airplane soon after the accident. Why? Because it releases toxic gases and explode. Right? Now, what will be the second sentence? In order to prevent passengers' death from gas inhalation, safety officials recommend that passengers be provided with smoke holes that prevent inhalation of the gases. Right. So, safety officials recommend that passengers must be provided with smoke holes so as to prevent inhalation and thereby prevent death. So, according to safety officials, the statement can become the conclusion. Right. So, the safety officials are trying to convince us that passengers must be provided with smoke holes so as to prevent inhalation and thereby prevent death. So, this statement is a conclusion according to safety officials. Now, what do you need the question? Let's see what is the end of the question. Which of the following, if true, constitutes the strongest reason not to require the implementation of the safety officials' recommendation? Right. So, the author of this particular argument wanted us to strengthen the point that the safety officials' recommendation is not required to implement. So, that point becomes a conclusion. Remember, we discussed whatever author wanted us to strengthen or weaken, that point becomes a conclusion. Here, in this case, author wanted us to strengthen that. The safety officials' recommendation is not required to implement. Right? So this point becomes a conclusion. This is a typical example of two conclusions. One in the question, which is called as an external conclusion, and one in the argument, which is called as an internal conclusion. So whenever there are two conclusions, internal conclusion and the external conclusion, the main conclusion is always the external conclusion, the one in the question. Is that clear? Yes.